Dr. Amish Patel will discuss and demonstrate the recommended technique for SI joint injection. Typically, the current gold standard is that SI joint injection should be performed under fluoroscopic guidance, utilizing contrast to confirm needle placement, injecting no more than two cc's of solution, whether it's a diagnostic and or a therapeutic injection. The percent pain reduction that we're looking for after a diagnostic sacroiliac joint pain injection under fluoroscopy is performed is greater than or equal to a 75% pain reduction when comparing pre-procedure and post-procedure visual analog pain scores within 15 to 30 minutes. We use the provocative maneuvers or simple functional activities like sitting, standing, and walking as typical measures of the pain reduction. Furthermore, patients will take home a pain diary log where they record their pain intensity scores every two hours for up to 24 hours. During the intra-articular SI joint injection procedure, a C-arm is used to identify the inferior portion of the SI joint with the patient in the prone position. Some physicians place a pillow under the abdomen at the level of the iliac crests. So when we do the SI joint injection, we typically want to start off by getting a true lateral image, which looks like this. This is where the anterior and posterior SI joints are superimposed, okay, which is what we see in this particular picture. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it towards me. And what you're going to notice here is that the SI joint is going to start to separate. And that's what we're seeing right now, to the point that we basically see our posterior joint, which is right here, and our anterior joint, which is right here, separating completely, okay? And what we think is the posterior joint, which is the medial one, is located right here. This is our opening. So this is basically where we're gonna to want to make our mark and anesthetize the skin. The sterilized area is anesthetized with 1% lidocaine. At this point, we don't wanna put any numbing medicine in the muscle because we don't want to create any sort of a false positive anesthetization of the muscle. So we just want to do just superficial anesthesia. So the next step now is that we're just going to put the needle over the numbing area and it should be overlying the SI joint. So let's get that to look like that. So the needle typically should start at the medial aspect of the joint line, which is what we see in this picture here. And we poke through the skin and the needle still along the medial part of the joint line, which is perfect. Doing okay? Dr. Patel advances the 22 gauge, three and a half inch styletted spinal needle, and the tip encounters an articular slide after piercing the joint capsule. A distinct pop can be felt when the joint is penetrated. So at this point, when we take a look at the needle here, I'm just piercing the capsule only. I don't wanna like drive it through and through. So what happened was, I put the needle to hit bone, and then I walked it into the joint. And now what we want to do is inject a little bit of contrast. A little bit. Once the needle is properly positioned within the inferior portion of the joint, 0.25 milliliters of one's contrast medium of choice is injected. So now we can start seeing the contrast flowing up into the joint here. And you can see it filling up into the capsule there. Now, what I want to do is see if I can get a little bit deeper. Right there. So in this particular photo, you can basically see all the contrast basically filling up the posterior part of the joint, which is right here. Okay? And this is the anterior part of the joint. And in the lateral view here, you can actually see the contrast flowing up into the joint space right here. Okay. So at this point, I don't want to inject any more contrast. I want to go ahead and basically put the numbing medicine into the joint. And we're going to inject about 1.7 cc's of anesthetic. For diagnostic injections such as this, up to two milliliters of local anesthetic may be injected. For therapeutic injections, 0.75 milliliters of the steroid of one's choice and 1.25 milliliters of 0.5% Marcaine would be used. We're all done, okay? 
Do you out on three? One, two, three. All finished, okay? So I just wanted to point a few distinct differences between the diagnostic injection you just saw compared to this patient. What you noticed on the first patient was that the contrast was only going into the posterior part of the SI joint. And in this particular diagnostic injection that we performed just recently, you're going to see it going through the posterior and anterior SI joint. So here's a picture of the actual needle in the distal third of the SI joint in the posterior aspect of the joint, like we talked about before, which is mostly located along the medial aspect, while this line here, this joint space, is the ventral aspect. Going to the next photo here, you can see as the contrast extravasates, it actually goes up both along the posterior contour and the anterior contour of the SI joint there. Moving to the next image, this is our lateral view. Okay, You can actually see the medication basically extravasating into both the posterior and the anterior SI joint. And you can also notice on this view that the medication is not leaking out of the joint, which tells me that when I inject this numbing medicine, I don't run the risk of developing a false positive diagnosis and running the risk of anesthetizing the L5 nerve root, the S1 nerve root, or the lumbosacral plexus. And this is just an our oblique view, where once again, you can see the medication nicely going along the anterior SI joint and along the posterior SI joint. And you can see it's staying within the confines of the capsule, and none of it is leaking out. It's really important to understand that when performing a diagnostic SI joint injection, that you're not always going to get contrast that flows through the posterior and anterior SI joint spaces. But it's very important that you at least see medication or contrast flowing into the posterior SI joint space. A therapeutic sacral leg joint injection can definitely yield a long-term result in reduction of pain. Typically what we expect after the first therapeutic sacral leg joint injection is within a two-week period a 40 to 50 percent pain reduction. As noted in the Zell paper, the injection of corticosteroids has shown to improve the pain for several months. However, the anti-inflammatory effect is not permanent, and the injections do not offer an opportunity to stabilize an incompetent joint. So after a therapeutic sacral joint injection is performed, a pelvic strengthening stabilization program is typically the next step in the treatment plan. This program typically lasts for as long as six to eight weeks. When patients are unresponsive to therapeutic sacral joint injections in conjunction with physical rehabilitation treatment, then the next step in the treatment plan would be to consider minimally invasive SI joint fusion.